Wow, thank you for being here today. My name is Martin Vargas, and uh, on behalf of the artists that are exhibiting in the back, I'd like to welcome all of you to this exhibit. It's called Connections, New Beginnings, Artists in Transition. And every single one of those words fits. We made connections with a lot of you guys and a lot of people that are not here today. We are changing, ever changing. We are artists in transition. We are transitioning from the inside. We are all ex-prisoners. All the paintings that are inside there are by ex-prisoners. Ex, because we're no longer inside, we're out here. But across the street, there are other paintings from actual prisoners who are inside. There's a lot of them. The only difference between the paintings over there and the paintings that are over here right now is that we are home. And I, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I use that word very loosely because some of us are very fortunate to be home, but there are others who are not home because they don't have a home to come to. Um, but they are still wonderful, wonderful artists. Uh, one of the things that I have to say is I am presently a curator with the University of Michigan's Prison Creative Arts Project in Ann Arbor, PCAP for short. When I was inside, I exhibited for 23 out of the 45 years that I had been incarcerated. And exhibiting with PCAP was one of my best uh, motiva motivating uh, elements from prison, except, of course, for my wife, my family, my sisters, brothers, the people that I connected with, my uh, non-biological Miha over there, uh, and quite a number of friends, many of which are here right now today. I burned too many brain cells, so I have to rely on notes, okay? PCAP is known, one of the best things that PCAP is known for is being the largest prisoner art, juried prisoner art exhibit in the world. In the world. I mean, that says a lot to me, you know? And I am so proud of being a part of this organization. Right now, we're planning on the 27th continuous year of going inside prisons to collect prisoner art, to show, not in venues like this, but at the Duderset um, facility, gallery, I don't know exactly what it is, in the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And uh, as we actually, PCAP actually does a couple of other things. It has many branches, but one of the branches, two other branches is that they do creative writing and theater workshops inside prison, just like the visual arts workshops that many of us participated in. Uh, for 25 years, for 27 years this year, but for 25 years they were doing this, and 2020 was the 25th anniversary. In 2020, come on. Everybody knows what happened in 2020 and why we could not hold the planned activities, live activities that we wanted to hold for the 25th anniversary milestone. COVID hit and everything got shut down, as you all know. Uh, it was a very big disappointment initially. But then, with permission from the Department of Corrections and with the uh, sour lemons that COVID gave us, we made the sweetest lemonade possible, really. Virtually, thanks to L. Chen, Vanessa Majewski, who should be popping her head in here in a few minutes, who's not here right now, but she's parking, Alisa Baginski, Tsukumo Niwa, Nelly M. Law, Jillian Hofstedt, Leah Liu, Nico Slowick, and Sam Hoey, we displayed, oh, there's Vanessa over there. Hi, Vanessa. But we displayed 828 works of art by 663 prisoner artists. This was PCAP's inaugural national and international exhibit 
the first time on the 25th anniversary. 10,872 web page visits from 47 states and 44 countries saw our 25th annual exhibit. I mean, what better way to set off that milestone? It was uh, the largest audience produced ever for prisoner art. This resulted in close to $32,000 in sales of prisoner art. Of that 32,000, 79% goes to the prisoners themselves. So a lot of people ask the question, where does this money go to? 6% is sales tax and 15% goes to the prisoner benefit funds in this, each institution. When we artists or writers or theater, uh, what do you call theater people? Theater uh, makers. What? Theater makers. Yes, what she says. <laughs> uh, I can't hear you with the... When we come out, we can no longer participate with the annual sales of art, for example, the visual artists, with PCAP anymore because we aren't a part, we aren't PCAP members anymore. We become uh, linkage members if we want to join linkage program, which is another branch of the PCAP program. And what linkage members are really is a community of formerly incarcerated artists, the visual artists. We're talented, two- and three-dimensional artists with abilities to excel in areas like uh, uh, graphic arts. Uh, we can work in museums. We can work in uh, galleries. We can work in uh, mechanical drawing positions. We can work in uh, advertising. But usually, we end up doing things like lawn care or maybe uh, restaurants, food service, construction, or even working in uh, car washes. Because people tend to fear ex-convicts. Oh, you were in prison. Oh, we can't really hire you. We, you're not good enough for our establishment. But we do what we can. So we ask you to listen to our stories. If you want to ask stories from the artists who are here, Cynthia, myself, there's a few other people who are also involved in the, the linkage program who are not here, like Ken over here. Listen to us and see how art helped us through our darkest years of our lives and how art taught us patience, tolerance, and determination to become better people when we were inside, so that we did come out here to you people who are, some of whom supported us greatly. We can show you that we are those people that you wanted us to become and did become. Productive members of our community, hopefully. Uh, making this exhibit was not easy at all. It's a wonderful venue, great artists, but connecting with men and women with strict parole conditions, uh, no transportation, housing, and other such re-entry obstacles that we have to go through. It's not that easy to just say, hey, you're an artist. Come over here and be a part of this. It sounds easy, but it really isn't. Of all the virtual art, visual artists that we connected with, 51 in all, 17 of them managed to actually create the exhibit you, that you will see in the other room. But it wouldn't be right if I didn't say that the other artists count just as much as the ones that are here. Just because they're not here doesn't mean that they aren't as important to us, the visual arts community out here, uh, as we are. Uh, the exhibit that you see presented today in the back room will be made, is made with conventional mediums. Paint, pencil, ink pens, you know, Convention, regular things that normal people feel that they create with, except for Cynthia, who actually creates wonderful three-dimensional art with paper. The roses that you will see in the back are created by her, and we thank you for that, Cynthia. But there are other artists who use non-conventional non -conventional media. They use 
toilet paper, cardboard, newspapers, magazines, flour, water, a mixture of paint, uh, acrylic paint to create paste. And of this paste and of their artistic and creative ideas are developed works, three-dimensional works that you would swear look like metal, like wood, like glass, like, like steel. Items that we are not supposed to have inside because they are dangerous weapons. But artists take paper like this, crumple it up, wet it, create these images and paint them, and you would swear that they are very, very solid objects. But they're not. They use feathers. They use, we, I say, use feathers. We use rocks. We use hair from the barber shop. We use so socks, the colored threads around the socks or other material. We take that off and we create art with it because we are artists. That's what we do. If we don't have conventional materials and supplies, we use what's around. Artists have done that for millennia. Uh, at this time, I would like to recognize the artists that are here and ask you to introduce yourselves in however you want. And it doesn't matter who goes first. Hello, y'all. Uh, as you see, I have roses in the back, and I have made those. Uh, basically, they helped me a lot with uh, to... Uh, meditate on. Uh, along with my friend, Jean, she helped me be my arm. I came out of prison back in 2009, and I had the trouble of even getting a job. And I think I, I, I had three strikes against me. One, I was a woman. Two, I was handicapped. And three, I was black. And no one wanted to hire in any of those places. So I said, well, I did these in prison. Let me try them out in the real world. And I just got to tell each and every one of y'all, thank you for your support. And now I'm actually trying to do an online thing. I, unfortunately, the sign I had is no longer there. But if anyone, anyone knows a friend, you're interested, um, my email would be my name for right now. is Cynthia, a C-Y-N-T-H-I-A dot C-A-S-E-Y 66 at gmail.com. Subject, Forever One Rose. Just let us know. We only do 24 roses <laughs> per person, up into or, or up into 24 roses, as well as we take a break between uh, November and start back up in March. That gives us time to build up supply. And I'm actually may, if I can get a grant, I may ask one of these lucky people that has uh, a friend who's talented to be. Uh, uh, what do you call an apprenticeship to help me do something that I would never let anyone do, and that's to teach them how to make one of my roses. So the opportunity might come up where I may actually get some lucky person who is skillful enough to help me create a rose, because I just can't do it all by myself. It's just me and G. But I also hope that we can actually do a class one day, and we've made it much more simpler where all you have to do is paint the rose now. So I hope you get that information, and um, I, I hope we enjoy everyone's art around here that has, that has became a masterpiece for everybody. When we couldn't get a job, Linkage helped us through. So thank you. Yeah, Hi, my name is Johnny Van Patten. I was formerly 711854. I got my name back, so I introduced myself to the name my mom gave me. Um, I earned that right, and it was no easy ride. Um, I did the right thing, turned myself in on a crime that was five years old, went in, served my time properly. They gave me nine and a half to 41 and a half years, and I'm glad to say that I got out in just under 10. Um, PCAP to me was something that validated me as an artist, and I've been drawing since I was about fourth grade. I started getting good at it, but I've been drawing since I was a little kid. Um, my granddaughter sits with me now, she's an artist. And the influence that that was, when I, when I walked in here with her and seeing some of the artworks that are in here, I've got five pieces, but some of these pieces, I sat in prison with that uh, Irvin Johnson piece, I watched that from beginning to end. We sat in the same day room, 
we drew, we watched each other's stuff while we were doing it. And the adversity that we go through in there, and I was explaining it to them, um, I'm one of those pieces trying to come up with ideas, referencing things of that sort, and then be creative with that, and then get the resources to do stuff. Like I was using the backs of writing tablets for cardboard to make frames, toothpicks. I stained things with coffee, um, you know, so on and so forth. You would use like a thumbtack to cut things and, and you just get really creative. But PCAP invited me to show some pieces and being able to see, and Martin was one of our heroes in there. I couldn't wait every year till his stuff came through where they'd show a little CD on a, all the TVs in our, in our uh, prisons. And we'd be able to watch everybody's artwork and we'd be like, oh, I, I know him, I know him, I know him. But we would all wait for certain people. Martin was one of those people. Um, and his influence on me came through in one of mine with the baby back there because his little pudgies were all in one color, but they were all shaded a certain way. And I was like, how can I do that? So we feed off of each other. Um, but what it did was validate us as artists. We got a platform that people could see that we have a viable talent that is worth something. And to be worth something when you're locked up, feeling like you're not worth anything because you're forgotten. When you get in there for a long time, and I'm sure Martin will agree, after X amount of years, you feel a little bit alone. I mean, it, it, it gets to that point. But what this did was put us out there. Um, it also got me some work while I was in there. And to give you guys an idea of a good job in prison might pay a dollar a day like 96 cents. But that deodorant that you need so that you don't smell bad, so you don't get stabbed by the guy next to you for stinking, still costs four and five dollars. So you would work an entire week to get a deodorant. You, you, you get me? The toothpaste would still cost what toothpaste costs out here, but you'd only be making 96 cents a day. That's a good job. Um, you might you might be working really hard for that out on the yard, you know, cutting grass with a sickle. They don't even have mowers at some of these places. You're hand cutting stuff. That's the kind of work we had to do in there to get stuff. And then to get the art supplies, which still cost that kind of money too. It's not cheap. So um, artists like me took the money that we did earn, invested it in ourselves, and then made a living on the inside doing portraits, cards, uh, whatever we could do. Um, I'm actually more known as a portrait artist. I don't have much up there, but I am available for that stuff. If anybody is curious about that, you can approach me about that stuff. But um, a, another form of art is tattooing. Um, and I was one of the guys who did not tattoo inside um, because I came from a tattoo world out here and was influenced by it. Um, Splash of Color, the original one actually, was one of the places that I grew up at. And, we frowned upon people tattooing in an unsterile environment. So I didn't do that in there, but I did do a lot of artwork and I practiced and I honed my instrument to the point where now on the outside and I've been out almost four years. Well, yeah, actually four years. And uh, now I can tattoo. Um, it, it's a good thing. I'm kind of getting back into that world. Um, we talked about trying to get jobs. You know, 200 applications, I got 10 interviews. You know, I got one job out of that. 200 applications. If you do that math and really think about that. Overqualified for every single job. More than qualified. I came out of prison with 119 certificates to do things with. And I wouldn't be able to be hired because of my background check every time. So that'll give you guys an idea of how the struggle is. It's real. Um, but we're out here and, the, and it, it's awesome to be on this side with people that we, I was hoping to see Lionel here really. <laughs> um, we have a connection amongst us artists that were on the inside that we taught a lot of people how to make a living on the inside because they're never coming home. I have not forgotten those people. One of my things is the prison ministry um, and I still keep in contact with a lot of people who are doing life. And I still kind of send them some money when I can send them some money. So if I do sell anything, I'll be sending some money to some people that are in the inside that are artists and some of that sort. And there are some prints of a couple of my pieces here. So 
Thanks for letting me blabber for a little bit. If you guys got any questions, I'll be back there. 11 years uh, inside the Michigan Department of Corrections, and I was involved in the Prison Creative Arts Project during that time. Um, I never thought of myself as an artist prior to going to prison, although looking back at it, I, I guess I did have a little bit of talent. It was never something that I that I uh, spent a lot of time at or, or really considered as a, a, a serious occupation. Um, and when inside prison, I, it was actually my mom that suggested that I start drawing or painting or something just as a way to pass the time, just to, you know, to give me something to do while I'm sitting there with nothing else to do. And so, so I did that and um, ended up being able to present some art in the Prison Creative Arts Project shows. And um, that was just a really incredible experience. I, I met uh, some wonderful people, some other artists on the inside and, and some wonderful people on the outside as well that, uh, that were making it all possible. And um, uh, I, I, I had this strange experience where people would tell me that I was an artist. And I and I, I never would have used that word to describe myself. But for and, and I'm not sure why not. But uh, but that was it sort of made me think. I guess that that um, doing this work that I was just doing, you know, to pass the time as as kind of a hobby, I guess. But it, it was something with real value uh, to other people, not not just to myself. And so so that was kind of exciting. It was it it was not just a way to pass the time and, and a way to be sort of productive in there, but it was a way to do something of value, to do something that actually meant something. And I learned over the years of doing it to, um, to actually communicate in this way. Normally I think about communicating in, in words. I like to write, I like to uh, do things like that, but using a visual medium uh, to communicate ideas and I realized I could I could say things through through paint that I that, that their their words weren't there to to say it, and so that was really um, really really gave me a good feeling too. So I, I guess altogether it was um, it was a a great experience that that helped tie me into to a community a little bit better and uh, gave me a voice that I didn't realize I didn't have until I until I started doing it. So uh, just a, a thanks to everybody that made PCAP possible. I think uh, it's, it's, it's obviously it has value. I think, I think anybody can see the value, but there's a value for the people on the inside that really isn't visible except for those people that have been involved in it. And uh, it, it really is a, a significant benefit to, to us who have been through that experience. Um, I've done a number of years in prison. Um, I've been out for a couple, a little over two years now. Um, I've been blessed to work for a factory. Been blessed to work for a factory. They, we make automotive uh, shipping containers and so on. Uh, it, it took me, like he was saying, I put in a lot of apps. I probably put in 80 or so apps, probably. And then I got a lead through a counselor on this job, and they pretty much hired me on the spot. And I've been there under two years, and already got a promotion as assistant crew leader. Just got another raise. I'm doing fairly well. <laughs> so I was very blessed in that area. Um, I said it was a struggle to get there, but once I got there, I'm good. Um, as far as art, I've been drawing since I was very young. I was encouraged by my mom to draw. She was an artist. Um, in prison, cards were one of my main livelihoods. You know, I sent cards home to people I loved, and then I sold a lot of cards. Done painting for if I had different um, religions that would approach me for doing paintings for their their organizations and stuff. And um, I've been blessed. The church I go to allowed me to build a, a little art station for the children, and I keep that fully stocked. And uh, that's been a blessing to work with them a little bit when I can. Um, keeps me inspired. I've got a couple paintings in here. One's from 2015 and one's from last year during the pandemic when I couldn't get out and travel. Um, I do plan to get back into painting a little more often. 
I do have several canvases and supplies built up now. So when my work allows, I'm going to get back to it. So I don't have a lot else to share. I just wanted to introduce myself. I appreciate everybody here. I appreciate PCAP for what they've done. They're a great help, inspiration. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, yeah, well, I forgot which one. Um, there's a single talk, local news. The exhibit was featured on the, one of the local news channels. Yeah. I was in the pulse, but yeah. I didn't know about this yeah. particular. Yeah. Open. They have, um,